Help new Muslims in Africa. Every prayer, every Surah Fatiha they recite, you'll share in the reward. Your £50 will go towards sponsoring one person's education and meals for a month. 500 supports 10 and 5,000 help sponsor an entire village. Donate now. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. I told you, I, I told, told you. you, I told you that these extreme Hindus in India, they are going absolutely crazy and they're feeling emboldened, emboldened to such a degree, if that is not dealt with, if that is not stopped, if, if that, that is, is not, not condemned, condemned, then it spills over to the rest of the world. Indians are a large amount and they exercise a lot of influence. We saw a year or so ago here in the UK in Leicester what they were capable of and now we are seeing in Canada smashing up cars, threatening cops and threatening the Sikh places of worship. Some officials from India were visiting a temple in Canada and just outside you had some Sikhs that were protesting and these Sikhs are pro Khalistan. Hang on a minute, what on earth is a Khalistan? I've heard of Kazakhstan, I've heard of Pakistan, is this like a mishmash of both of them? No, it is a state that the Sikhs want for themselves and I will tell you why because of a number of things that have happened that they feel unsafe and unrepresented. So these guys were outside. Naturally there were some Indian Hindutva extremists that incited them and then a skirmish broke out. Now when you search about this, majority of the news articles that will be covering this are Indians because Indians have Number one, a very large population and number two, as a result, they have many news stations. And on these newspapers, you'll be convinced that it was the Sikhs. These are aggressive, they're called T's by the Indians obviously because the Indians disagree with them and because the Sikhs don't have much representation in the media, people are like, yo, these bearded folk that look very similar to Muslims, these guys are causing issues again. But that is absolutely false. Regardless if you were to just look at the facts, the facts were nothing happened in the Hindu temple. It was outside that the skirmish took place because you had officials visiting there and it was a protest. But a lot of this has been severely watered down. Sikhs attacking Hindu temple and then Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, the butcher of Gujarat, the one that once upon a time was banned to even enter America, this guy is very quick to condemn which is very ironic because those people that are following what's going on in India you would know that a number of churches and mosques have been desecrated and destroyed and demolished but of course that's uh, that's another issue isn't it. Now this has worsened the already relationship between Canada and India because Justin Trudeau the leader of Canada publicly blamed the death of a Sikh to foreign interference by India. And who was it that these Indians killed on Canadian soil? This was in 2023 and it was somebody called Hardeep Singh Nijjar who was the advocate for of course Khalistan and he was the president of the British Columbia Gurudwara. Canadian spy agency already warned him that his life was under threat and when he was then killed, the Canadian police amongst other law enforcement found strong evidence that India was indeed involved. To such a degree that the leader of Canada felt confident to say to the world that India was to blame. October 2024 and straight after both of them started expelling their diplomats and not to mention the United States also exposed a unsuccessful plot to kill again another Sikh who was promoting Khalistan called Gurpatwant Singh Panun. And the one charged was Avinash Yadav who was India's research and analysis wing spy service. So India has been heavily involved in exporting their hate abroad. And the reason why Canada is so significant because Canada after India hosts the most amount of Sikhs. And not to mention the Punjab state that they want is 58% Sikh. 
and only 39% Hindu. But all of this context is going to be divorced from the media. The only thing mentioned is going to be, oh the Sikhs attacked a temple. We're seeing Indians indiscriminately attacking cars in Brampton. Brampton is a predominantly Sikh area. We're seeing in their protests, they're mentioning the names of convicted gangsters like Lawrence Bishnoi. <laughs> who has been known to kill Sikhs. He's a gangster who's admitted to killing many people. Authorities link him to the Indian government as well that he's being used to remove people for India. Not to mention a WhatsApp group has been going viral where Indians were strategizing with one another to throw petrol bombs at the police. And we saw of course this went viral, we posted it on S2J News, a Hindutva extremist by the name of Ron Banerjee. Hear what he has got to say. Indian army to come here to Canada and storm the f***ing temple. Ah. The Indian army must come to Canada and must storm the Khalistan Sikh temple. Storm the Yes, and this was on Canadian soil. He's asking for the Indian army to invade another country. Are you Canadians okay with that? Here you have a Sikh that's just doing his job. There's no way to know he's Sikh. There's no way to know that he's Sikh other than his turban and his beard, but that's enough for the protesters to say no, 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 no. He shouldn't be involved here, he shouldn't be involved here. He's getting discriminated against mate. And we're seeing further chants that are encouraging hatred and violence towards the Sikh community. <laughs> Now this is just tip of the iceberg. This is naturally going to increase because Narendra Modi and his BJP government have a very strong hold on India which is and has been purporting violence against minorities. But let's stick with the Sikhs here. Now this movement for Khalistan originally started when the British left India but started gaining momentum in the 1970s when Sikhs felt that they were being underrepresented and not protected by the government. However, it was in 1984 that Operation Blue Star was sanctioned by the leader of India at that time, Indra Gandhi. And what is Operation Blue Star? Well, the most holiest place for the Sikhs is something called the Golden Temple. And the Indians said that a few extremists or terrorists, most specifically somebody called Jarnail Singh Bindranwale, that he was there amongst other people and they were causing discord in the country, therefore they sanctioned that this holy site would be stormed and as a result thousands died including innocent worshippers and pilgrims because it's a pilgrimage site for many Sikhs. This naturally put a very bad taste in the mouth of a lot of Sikhs and the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had two bodyguards who were Sikhs and they it is said killed her. Because of that what followed from there was something called the 1984 Sikh massacre. The Sikhs are trying to say it wasn't just a massacre, it was a genocide. And what followed was according to independent estimates 8,000 Sikhs that were butchered, burnt, women of course were abused. The word pogrom is used when you have a certain ethnicity that people are trying to literally wipe out. Yeah, Anyone who looked like a Sikh, that's it, it was game over. Of course Muslims amongst other minorities stood up and protected the Sikhs, however it was a very difficult time for them. Since then they have realized and now of course with the BJP which is known as an extremist Hindutva ideology that is permeating India and flowing over to the rest of the diaspora as well. And after that Wikileaks released cables in which even America acknowledged that the government was involved in that pogrom of 1984, that massacre. And Human Rights Watch in 2011 also said that India is yet to prosecute effectively the people that were involved. So 
Is it any wonder that Sikhs feel that they are unsafe, unrepresented and who knows something like this can come again? So naturally these people are not comfortable living amongst individuals like this. Don't fall for the Indian fake news. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Assalamu alaikum.